Good morning, everyone. Um, today, we are looking at the third in our Advent series that we've entitled Seeing Christ in Christmas. And hopefully you remember that two weeks ago, Claire talked about Isaiah prophesying Jesus. And then last week, uh, Chick talked about the Magi seeking Jesus. And today I'm going to think about Mary and Joseph accepting Jesus. Um, of course, I could have called it welcoming Jesus. We could have called it welcoming Jesus because they didn't just accept him. They welcomed him into their lives, even though, of course, he didn't easily fit into their lives. For them, being prepared to accept Jesus meant embracing inconvenience, discomfort, misunderstanding, dishonour, the list could go on. However, it did also, of course, mean embracing the miraculous, the word of God, the hope for their nation, the light and life of the whole world. And I want to start by asking you a question, simply this, what are you doing with Jesus this Christmas time? What are you doing with Jesus this Christmas time? Are you accepting him and welcoming him into your life, no matter what that means? For Mary and Joseph, they weren't married. They were just pledged to be married. And as it became obvious that Mary was pregnant, so the questions, the looks, the dishonour would have increased. But they were more concerned to accept what God was giving them than to give in to the fear of what other people were thinking or saying, or to give in to the temptation of settling for the easy, ordinary life. They welcomed Jesus. And I want to spend the rest of my time by talking about two ways that they accepted and welcomed Jesus, and then briefly at the end, three ways that we can accept stroke welcome Jesus. So first of all, Mary and Joseph, how did they accept Jesus? Number one, they accepted Jesus by believing what was said to them. You may well have read that Joseph, when he found out that Mary was pregnant and he knew only too well that he wasn't the father, um, he had it in mind to, to bring their planned marriage to an end and um, he was going to stop that and he was going to try and do it quietly so he didn't dishonour her, her and, and make things worse for her and bring her under more and more shame. But then this happened. It says in Matthew 1, 20 to 21, but after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. I don't know about you, but if you put yourself in Joseph's shoes, uh, I don't think that was the easiest thing just to believe, just to go, oh yeah, of course. Um, but actually he did. He believed it and we know that because actually he acted on what, when he woke up, it says he acted on what the angel has said to him in the dream. Mary similarly believed what was said to her. In Luke 1, verse 30 to 33, it says, But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You'll conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. Remarkable things are spoken to her about her son. How she gets her head around the fact that she's going to conceive a son without having sexual relations. It's phenomenal, but she does. She believes it. And this is actually what um, Elizabeth said to her. She said, blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. That was her response. Mary believed what was said to her. So the first way that they accepted and welcomed Jesus was by believing what was said to them. The second way was by saying yes. They accepted Jesus by saying yes. 
Mary's response to what was said to her by the angel was, I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. In essence, what she's saying is, Amen. She's saying, let it be. I accept. I say yes. Anyone that has a baby knows that life doesn't just remain the same. Everything changes. In fact, I've often said to people that uh, when I got married, I think um, I, all sorts of selfishness got addressed because I had to, couldn't just think about myself. But it was when we had children that that hit a whole new level. It's like, I just can't think first of all about myself. Everything changes. And Mary was saying yes to this incredible responsibility of looking after Jesus, looking after the light, life and hope of the world. She was saying yes to hope and to trouble. She was saying yes to love and to pain. In fact, we'll probably focus next week a little bit on Simeon's prophecy where he says, a sword, says to Mary, a sword will pierce your own soul too. She was prepared to say yes to all that involved in welcoming and accepting Jesus into her life. So Mary and Joseph accepted and welcomed Jesus into their lives. And I want to finish by uh, helping us to think about how we can accept and welcome Jesus into our lives at this Christmas time. Three things to finish with. First of all, we welcome Jesus by believing what is said about him and what he said about himself. Just as Mary and Joseph chose to believe what was said to them about Jesus, so we have that same opportunity. The angel um, said to, to Joseph, said, uh, you shall give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. We have that opportunity to believe that, that Jesus has come into our world to save us from our sins. And then Matthew goes on to, to say, uh, quote Isaiah, saying, The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. What do you believe about Jesus? Do you believe he's come to save you from your sins? Do you believe he's come to be with you so that we can know the presence of God in our lives? Jesus himself said, for God so loved the world, talking about his father, he said, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, talking about himself, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So we welcome Jesus by believing what is said about him. Secondly, we welcome Jesus by saying yes to him, just as Mary and Joseph didn't just believe, but said yes, said amen, let it be. If you believe that Jesus came into the world to die for your sins, then what we then need to do is say yes. Is say yes, I receive that. One of the verses that was instrumental uh, in me, first of all, making a decision to welcome Jesus into my life, was shared at a camp that I was at uh, from Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. It has Jesus saying this, says, Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. He is knocking on the door of our lives, wanting to come into our lives. It's up to us to, as it were, turn the handle and open the door and say yes to him. He's a gentleman. He doesn't force his way into our lives. He waits to be invited. He waits to be welcomed. And we welcome him by saying, yes, come into my life. Please forgive me. Please be the Lord of my life. And the final way that we welcome Jesus is that we welcome Jesus by welcoming the weak and vulnerable. You may remember that later on in Matthew's Gospel, before he himself went to the cross, Jesus said this, uh, when people were saying, when did we see you doing this? And when do we see you doing that? And when do we miss the opportunities to serve you and to love you? He says this, whatever you did for the least of these, you did for me. And then in reverse, he said, whatever you didn't do for the least of these, you didn't do for me. Where people are weak and vulnerable is where we get to welcome Jesus himself. I read this quote 
um, a couple of weeks ago, and as we were leading up to Christmas, it just struck me. Uh, Steve Maraboli, if I'm saying his name right, Steve Maraboli said this, want to keep Christ in Christmas? Feed the hungry, clothe the naked, forgive the guilty, welcome the unwanted, care for the ill, love your enemies, and do unto others as you would have done unto you. We get to welcome Jesus by welcoming the weak and vulnerable. Do you want to see Christ in Christmas? Can I encourage you? Welcome those that are most in need. Serve those that are most in need and see how you get to see him this Christmas. My prayer is that we will learn from Mary and Joseph and carry a similar spirit and be ready to believe, say yes, and then having said yes to him, express his love to others by meeting the needs of others this Christmas time. God bless.